Yes, yes, yes. Charlie, what in the world has made you so grumpy? When you left the breakfast table this morning after family devotions, just a couple of minutes ago, you were happy and singing? Mom, I'm on to thinking about the time that no good for nothing John White borrowed my bike without asking and ran over glass made the tire go flat. I'm in a bad mood now. Charlie, that happened a couple of months ago. Why are you thinking about that now? Well, it just popped into my mind, and the more I thought about it, the matter I got. Now I'm in a horrible mood, and it's all that John White's fault. No, Charlie, I disagree with you. It's not John White's fault you're in a bad mood today. It's your fault for choosing to think about something negative, like the time John White ruined your tire. You mean it's my choice what I think about? Thoughts pop into our minds all the time. But we choose what to really think about for a long time. You mean when I thought about John White this morning, I shouldn't have thought very long about the bad thing he did? Right. John White has done so many good things. You could choose to think about those things. A verse in the Bible, Philippians 4, 8, tells people what they should think about. You listen as I tell this verse and then tell me what people should be thinking about. Okay, Mom. All right. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. That sure is a lot of things to think about, and they all are good things. Right, Charlie. I like the part of the verse that says, think on these things. In other words, think long about or concentrate on the good things. I wasn't doing that this morning and i surely ruined my day you were right mom it wasn't john's fault it was my fault well you can change that and think about good things now here let me tell you a joke to get you laughing again did you hear about the man who got fired from the orange juice factory no mom what happened he couldn't concentrate <laughs> Oh, Mom, I get it. He couldn't concentrate. Concentrated orange juice. That's funny. <laughs> I think I'll go see if John wants to play. I'll tell him my new joke. Remember, Charlie, what you concentrate on or think about is your choice. Okay, Mom. Are we downhearted? No, no, no. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday School. Thank you so much for joining me today for another home video Sunday School lesson. And a special shout out and thank you to my puppeteer volunteers for bringing us Charlie's story this morning. Now, what Charlie and his mom were talking about is gonna be the theme of our Sunday School lesson today. We're gonna to talk about our thoughts and how, like Charlie learned in that little lesson that we started out with, Charlie learned that our thoughts are our choice.
Sometimes we don't have any control over a thought that pops into our mind, but we do have control over whether we allow those thoughts to stay in our mind and think about them and concentrate on them. And so we're going to look into a story from God's Word in the Old Testament. We're going to be in the book of 1 Samuel. And we're going to look at a, a short story about someone in the Bible who didn't have control and a choice over their thoughts, meaning they let those negative and bad thoughts stay in their mind. They didn't take control over it and say, no, I'm only going to think on those things that are true and pure and lovely, like that verse in Philippians told us. And then we're going to look at what we can do to have a choice and to think on the good thoughts that God would have us to think about. So we're going to turn in our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 16. And here in 1 Samuel chapter 16, we learn about who the first king of Israel was. You remember him. He was Saul, the very first king of Israel. And you remember that Saul started out as God's choice. Now, he wasn't his first choice for the people for a king. God was supposed to be their king. But when the people demanded a king, God said, I'm going to choose this man, Saul. And he started out as a man who was um, trying to serve the Lord and do right. But over time, he disobeyed the Lord. He rebelled against the Lord. And you remember, that's why God chose a second king to be raised up, and he was David. But you know, if we look into God's word and we see what happened with Saul, what went wrong, we can see that so much of it had to do with his thoughts. So thoughts are important. Letting those things stay in our minds that are bad or negative or wrong thoughts, it can really affect our heart, and our heart affects our actions and our attitude, and so many things all can be traced back to what those thoughts are in our minds. So thoughts are important. Well, we look back here in 1 Samuel chapter 16. God had chosen David to be the next king of Israel because Saul had disobeyed. That's another lesson in itself. If we go back a few chapters, God had rejected Saul from being king. And Saul was starting to get angry and bitter. He hadn't repented and said, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, I know what I, I know what I did was wrong. No, he instead let his heart become hard and his thoughts were bitter. And so we come here in chapter 1 Samuel chapter 16, we read that Saul was troubled. He had an evil spirit troubling him. He was depressed. He was discouraged. He was angry and jealous that his servant said, Let's go to Saul, King Saul, and say, can you, will you give us permission to find someone who can play music? The Bible says here, a cunning player on the harp, because they were hoping that this music would soothe him and cause his thoughts to go to better places, and he wouldn't be so troubled and discouraged and bitter anymore. And so Saul said unto his servants in verse 17, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. And then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing. Do any of you play an instrument? You know, it's really great to be able to play a musical instrument. It's a gift that God has given you if you have a talent for that and you can practice and play because music it's a wonderful gift from God, a beautiful gift and a talent that God has given you. So be like David, be cunning in playing, or he's practiced hard and he's very good at it. He's a mighty, valiant man, a man of war, prudent in matters. He's wise. He's a comely person. And the Lord is with him. They knew it wasn't just any music that Saul needed. They needed a man of God, someone who the Lord is with. And so Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, that's David's father, and he said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. And so we read that Jesse, his father, he called for David, who was out in the fields tending his sheep. And we know, because the Bible tells us before this, that God, through Samuel, had actually already anointed David to be the next king of Israel. But did Saul know that yet? No, he didn't. And so David comes before Saul, and it says that he stood before him and he loved him greatly. 
and he became his armor bearer. He had a, a position there in King Saul's household. And Saul sent to Jesse and said, let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. See, he was a young man who was, his Bible said he, was, he had wisdom, he carried himself well, he had a good attitude and outlook. And Saul said, I want this young man to be in my palace. I want him around me. Let me ask you a question. You who are listening to me today, are you a young person that people can say, I want to be around this person. They have a nice attitude. They have nice things to say. They're pleasant to talk to. They smile. They have a, a good countenance, meaning their face is showing that they're happy, that they're, they love the Lord and they walk with the Lord. David was that person. He was that young man. And so it says that it came to pass as he had this evil spirit upon him and he was discouraged and depressed that David took a harp and he played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well and that evil spirit of those bad thoughts in his mind and in his heart departed from him. He, he let that music be a reason for his thoughts to change. And it would be wonderful if we could say that, you know, every time Saul had that bad spirit in him, he didn't want to dwell on those thoughts anymore. But over time, Saul's heart became harder. The thoughts of his mind turned towards anger and jealousy. And we only have to go over a few chapters to see what happened. How Saul let those thoughts in his mind that were dark and discouraging get into his heart. And pretty soon, it even changed how he felt towards David. So we read, you remember in chapter 17, that is the amazing story about David and how God gave him the strength to kill the giant Goliath, right? That's the, the story that's in chapter 17. Well, we come over here to 1 Samuel chapter 18. And we read that Saul let those thoughts of jealousy now get into his mind and he dwelt on them. He thought on them. Here's what happened. It says it came to pass. I'm in verse six. As they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines. Remember, Saul didn't stand up against Goliath, the, the, the giant of the Philistines. It was David that stood up and said, I'm going to fight for the Lord. And so as they were returning from this great victory, the women came out of all the cities of Israel and they were singing and dancing to meet King Saul because he's the leader, you know, he's the king. He's the one leading this army back into town. They had tabrets with joy and with instruments of music. And the women, they started singing this song and Saul hears that he's so happy to be coming back with a victory over the Philistines. And they answered one another as they played, and they said, Saul hath slain or killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. They used to sing songs saying how wonderful Saul was, and now they're saying, yeah, Saul is still great, but David is greater. He had a bigger victory. And look at verse 8. And Saul was very wroth. That means he was not just a little bit angry, he was very angry. Hot anger filled him. And the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands. And to me, they have described, ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? Now they're going to want to make him king. Well, the people weren't planning to make him king. But God had already planned to make him king. And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. See, a thought came into his mind as he heard those women singing about David. And instead of saying, no, that thought shouldn't stay in my mind, that thought of anger and bitterness, jealousy, I'm gonna get rid of that thought. I'm gonna call for David to, to bring the harp and I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask God to take those thoughts from me. No, instead he let those thoughts stay in his mind. And the more he thought about it, the angrier he got, the more upset he became in his spirit. And so the Bible says it came to pass on the morrow, the next day, that David played with his hand as at other times. So he comes in, David doesn't know anything's different towards him from, this, from Saul's mind and heart. And so he comes at other times, 
but this time there was a javelin or a long spear in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin and he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. See that thought that came into his mind? He let it stay there until not only was he feeling jealous, but now he's actually wanting to kill and to murder. See where those thoughts, how they jumble up and they bring us to sin and get worse unless we ask God to take them out of our minds? And so he said, I'm going to kill David. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. He was jealous. He realized that he had hardened his heart. God had rejected him because he wouldn't repent of his sin. And he says, David, David has the spirit of God. God is, is, has favor with David. All the people love David. Saul could have had that favor with God if he had turned back to him, but he didn't. And so he was afraid of David. He was jealous of David. And Saul removed him from him. Get out of my presence. Don't come before me anymore. And he made him a captain over a thousand. He was actually hoping he'd go into battle and get killed. But verse 14 says, but David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. He didn't let Saul and his bad mood and his murderous attitude change the way he was feeling. And he behaved himself wisely and the Lord was with him. You can't control what other people do, what other people think. You can only control what's in your own heart and in your own mind. And you know, David is our example about how we should let good thoughts come into our mind. You know, David wrote many of the Psalms that are in the Bible. And when we read these Psalms so many times, David is praying to God about what's in his thoughts and what's in his mind. That's why he says, I want to meditate or think long and hard about the things of God and meditate on thy statues, meaning the Bible. And we read here, this is a great verse. And remember, David wrote this verse. It's actually a prayer. In Psalm chapter 19, this is one of these verses that it would be great to take that colored pencil that we talked about last week in our lesson and underline this verse or highlight it in your Bible. It's a great prayer. David writes here, let the words of my mouth, very important what comes out of your mouth. We've talked about that recently. And the meditation of my heart. That's the things that you think on. Philippians said, think on these things. And David prayed, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, my thoughts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. That is a great verse to memorize. It's a great verse to pray when those thoughts are in your mind that you know they shouldn't stay there because it's going to change like Charlie learned in our puppet lesson. Charlie learned that it changed his mood. It changed his attitude. He didn't have a choice of whether that thought came into his mind. Something reminded him that morning of John White and how he ruined his bicycle. You can't change or have control over a thought that pops into your mind, but you can have control and a choice over whether that stays in your mind and causes you to have a bad mood and a bad attitude. So you pray to the Lord and say, let not only the words that come out of my mouth, but even the thoughts that I dwell on in my heart, my mind, let those all be acceptable in thy sight. You know, that reminds us that God hears all of our thoughts. People only hear what comes out of our mouth, but God hears that and also the things that are in our thoughts. So how do we get rid of those thoughts when they come into our mind? All sorts of different thoughts that we know are not right. How do we get rid of them? Well, first, that's the first thing is to pray. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Lord, the things I think about or allow myself to dwell on or keep thinking about and my words, let it be acceptable in thy sight. Help me, Lord to only think of those things that are true and honest and pure and of good report, okay? Number two, the next thing we learn is if something comes into our mind that isn't right, that isn't good, isn't one of those things that are pure and just and lovely, then you replace it with good thoughts. 
Let me give you an example. Let's say I invited you over to my house and in my house was a huge polka dot elephant. I mean huge, it was so big it filled the entire living room. And I brought you in here and I said, no matter what you do, I want you to not think about the polka dot elephant that is in my living room. Don't think about it. And I just commanded you, don't, don't think about that elephant. That would be impossible because the minute I told you not to think about it, it's all you can see, it's all you can think about. You couldn't just stop thinking about the polka dot elephant in my living room. By the way, I don't have a polka dot elephant in my living room, but I'm just giving you an example. You would be thinking about it all the time. Me telling you to stop thinking about it wouldn't make you stop, would it? And it's not enough to just to tell myself, okay, this is a wrong thought in my mind. Stop thinking about it. No, in order to have those thoughts gone from our minds so we don't dwell on them, we need to replace it with something else. The only way for me to get you to stop looking at that elephant and stop thinking about it would be to get rid of the elephant and put something else in its place. And I say instead, okay, the elephant's gone and we put up, let's say, a Christmas tree, a beautiful Christmas tree in my living room. And then you could look at that and think about that because that's been replaced with something else. Let me give you a little object lesson. We're, I'm gonna get a few props here. What I have is I have a bowl of some coffee grounds from my coffee this morning, and I have some cotton balls, okay? So I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about this principle of if you wanna get rid of bad thoughts, because the Bible says don't let them stay in your mind and heart, you have to replace them with something else. So I'm gonna get a toilet paper roll holder here. And I'm gonna write on this. This is gonna represent my, or yours, my mind, okay? This is gonna be my mind. And I've got some cotton balls here. I got a bag of cotton balls. Now, let's have this bowl of coffee grounds. We're gonna get some cotton balls in here and we're gonna put them in this coffee grounds to make these cotton balls really dirty and gross. Look at that. Okay, these are gonna be those thoughts that God does not want to dwell in our minds. Like I said, sometimes you don't have a choice if something comes into your mind, but you always have a choice to let it stay there. So let's put these thoughts in our minds, okay? It could be something like, someone was mean to me, someone did wrong, even if it was an accident, like John White in that story, and I'm gonna just keep thinking about these things that they did to me. Or it could be something like a thought of, I'm so worried, what's gonna happen? I don't know, I'm so afraid of getting sick or I'm afraid of something happening in my family and I'm always so worried and afraid. Those can be thoughts that come into our mind. Or I saw something you know, that I shouldn't have seen on the news, something scary and it's all I'm thinking about and it's going into my mind and I'm just thinking and thinking, oh goodness, they're all falling out. It's kind of making a mess. And you're putting these things into your mind. Now your mind is filled with fear and worry and maybe bitterness towards someone else, kind of like Saul had toward David. Maybe it's a thought about being jealous of someone else. Maybe it's a negative thought about yourself. You start thinking, oh man, I, I did bad on this test or a piano recital went really bad. I can't do anything right. I wish I could be like that person. I'm no good. I'll never be good at this. Those are also bad thoughts. Those are negative thoughts. It's not like the thoughts in the list that Paul was writing about. Whatsoever things are true and lovely and just and of good report is their virtue, is their praise. Those are the things we think about. How do we get these thoughts out of our mind? Well, you know, the only way to get them out is to replace them with something good. You know, like Charlie's mom said, instead, let's think of the good things that John White has done. And as we start to replace with these good things, let's think of some of the talents and wonderful things God has given you. Maybe school, a school subject like math isn't your best subject, but has God given you a talent for music or for other subjects? Think of those things. Of course, do your best in your subjects, but don't go around saying, oh, I'm no good, I can't do this. Someone hurt me, someone bothered me. Instead say, I'm gonna think on good things. 
you're worried about something going on in the world, something you saw in the news, something scary you maybe shouldn't have watched, replace those with good thoughts. I'm going to instead think about something happy, about a nice story that I listened to or I watched. I'm going to read something good. And instead, those good thoughts, as they go into your mind, you replace them. And look, it's gotten rid of these bad thoughts. Again, you don't have a choice sometimes if something pops in your mind. You do have a choice whether they stay there. So let's be Young people, let's be believers who say, I'm going to think on the good things. David wrote another verse, one of my favorite songs, in chapter 139. Hopefully, I can open my Bible without getting coffee grounds all over here. Psalm 139, oh, it's one of my favorite psalms. And you know why? It's because I had to memorize it when I was in first grade. Sometimes I think the kids who listen to Sunday school, maybe they're too young, they don't understand it all, but I memorized, our teacher made us memorize all of Psalm 139 when I was in first grade, I was six years old. And to this day, it's one of my favorite Psalms. Well, listen to what David wrote. He said in verse 23, another prayer, he said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. If you're struggling with your thoughts, ask God to help you and to give you that cleansing and say, Lord, I want, I want good thoughts in my mind. Could you please help me with that? Search me. See what's in my heart and in my mind and help me. And the very last thing I want to leave you with today is, you know, our thoughts are important. But here's a wonderful thought in the same chapter that David wrote, the same Psalm 139. He said, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number with, than the sand. Meaning you can't count them. God is always thinking thoughts of you. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He never stops thinking of you and for your good and your joy and for you to grow as a believer and how to take care of you. He is always thinking thoughts of peace towards you and how to help you and care for you. So that should comfort you. Not only are our thoughts supposed to be pleasing to God, but you can go forward if you're fearful or worried, thinking God is always thinking of me and I don't have to be worried or fearful. I don't have to be like Saul and have my heart full of bitterness toward another person or even a disappointment in myself and what I'm doing. God cares about me and he will help me have good thoughts and he will help me through all the things I have to go through in the Christian life. So there's my encouragement for you guys today. Again, I wanna shout out thank you to my puppeteers for bringing Charlie and his mom to life for our lesson today. I'll see you next time. Hope you all have a great week. And remember, when it comes to our thoughts, those things that are good and pure and true, let's all purpose to think on those things. Have a great week. Bye-bye.